bonus with face, pat, and tiz. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Is it time is... to rock and roll? Oh, shit. Did this nigga come out with a guitar? What did... This nigga got props this week? Oh, this is about to be a good one. Oh, this is about to be... Ain't no, ain't no loopy pat this week. Hell no. Nah. This nigga came with a guitar? He got a guitar, y'all. Uh, and yes, yeah. I said like that. It's guitar. Yes, guitar. Guitar. Guitar, right? From country. This nigga, I did not expect to see this nigga pull out the fucking Stratocaster 9000. This nigga came out like <laughs> Bob Marley about the same redemption song. I think I need to tune one of these strings, though. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some was off. I guess the fact that say you, time. this nigga got props this week. I'm done. I, am talk, I love the I love the commitment to the to the presentation. Can you play that motherfucker? No. Oh, I was about to be like, yo, hey, I want to learn how to play that shit too. Oh, I you know who know how to it. play? I'm thinking about giving me a cheap acoustic jump from like a thrift shop, thrift shop or something. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be all the rage at the parties and whatnot. Oh, I, I'm going to tell you, if I learn how to play the it's guitar, it's a rap. It's a rap. I, that, I'm, I'm, I'm making the intro song to the show. We about to have a whole new level of production. We about to have live music breaks. We about to be like the new 85 South. We about to have song breaks and shit. It's about to be a rap. Don't let me learn how to play. Don't let me learn how to play no fucking keyboard or no guitar. Nigga. Yeah, I ain't you know, trying to have trying. I ain't trying to be doing the show from behind no damn trap set. So I ain't about to bring out no drums and shit. I ain't about to do all that. <laughs> band with the drums, yo. Bing, bing, trap bing. set. I was I was getting with the trap set when I was young. They gave me a trap set for Christmas. Used to play drums on that drum. Um, yeah, when I had the trap set when I was younger, but you know. Okay, man, you know, you them. know, you know, me and Face was on the drum line in high school. Yeah, yeah, I remember y'all said that too. I was but when I got in high school, yep. moms wanted both self-taught. Well, reading the liquor damn music. Yep. Nope. We was Nick Cannon's before Drumline hit. Like when that movie came so out, I was like, did this nigga know us? <laughs> Cause legit, legit, my first, my only, my only real scholarship offer to uh, school at first. Was a band scholarship at first. Uh, HU wanted me to come play in the band, but I was thinking about the workload. And after pre college, I was I turned it down and went for the science grant that I had uh written in. But yo, that damn uh, yeah, like nigga couldn't play shit, nigga couldn't read shit. I say, but we played our ass off, we was beats. We did a lot of shit in the band. One day, we'll talk about the uh, the time we uh, staged a lock in to get rid of our <laughs> band director. But uh, yeah, we're talking about that. We've we been revolutionary for a long time, man. This shit ain't new to this. We ain't new to this. We true to this shit. Oh, but yeah, uh, proceed. My bad, man. I think it's time. I think it's time. What time is it? Fuckery time. <gasps> Fifty-one. Good and fuckery. Good and That was random. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> right. <laughs> this nigga. <big attack. laughs> All right. Well, we're going to start it off with. Nigga, you um, have to do the whole good and fuckery with the guitar, man. You know that, right? Oh, you can't just break no new shit out of there. Just, no, fuck that, nigga. That's a part of the show now. Oh, yeah. You never know. Uh, I might come out. Wait till this podcast get, get real big and we get a studio week. and we doing this shit live every week. Oh, nigga. I'm going to look like Teddy Riley in the verses. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully our Wi-Fi don't do like his. Man. 
Hopefully by yes, that time exactly. we done fixed all of our tech issues and videos play <laughs> on, on time and sound stays working. <clears throat> but that's neither here nor there. I digress. Yeah. Well, neither here nor there. Matter of fact, near there where you live, Tiz. Uh oh, we got some. <laughs> we got some Georgia fuckery. Yep. Yep. No. Oh well, we starting off with some Georgia good. Oh Georgia shit! Good. Now, what we got good going yeah. on? We love smoking that Georgia good. Anyway, uh, Ti. Good Ti news. Actually bought his Atlanta hood. Now he's spreading affordable housing throughout Bankhead. When you like, say he bought the hood, like he bought like all the houses on the block type shit. He's buy he's buying real estate in um his old hood or whatever. He um November third, uh, Ti and Tiny they took a trip around old Bankhead, scope mm-hmm. out his new affordable housing development. Mm-hmm. Um, says his a development includes 143 units, a community garden, community oh, center, and a greenhouse. Shit! All right, <clears throat> salute too. So yeah. That's how you In go my back. T.I. And, voice. That's how you go back and give back to your block, man. Salute to the king. The king mm-hmm. got the side. So in my T.I. voice. So yeah, checking on my development here in in Bankhead. You know what I'm saying? That's what he said on Instagram. I ain't oh, about okay. to do all that. Yeah, I was gonna say you was I, like a mixture of New York and Chicago mm-hmm. and. No, nah, the way they wrote yeah, it up man. here it just looked like he said it like that. But I not a, when I started, I was like, you know what? I was like that. <laughs> that sound more like he's reaction. Me. So, so, so yeah. Checking <laughs> on my development here in Pinky. <laughs> he was sound extra proper. <laughs> that was but yeah. I got you. Tia's doing some good. He's doing some good. Um, but you know, next on the list or whatever, you know, um, we were talking <laughs> about the uh, the yay interview and whatnot. And, yes, uh, sir. So, you can check so out November. our reaction to that live on YouTube. Yeah. You can see it now, right now. Right now, right now on the pod. That's T H E P O D N A S. All of anyway. our li- for all of our listeners, go check us out on YouTube too. So, on the eleventh month. In the on the eleventh day of the eleventh month, twenty twenty one, Drink Champs are going to release part two of the interview. Hold on, that's stuff that we missed. There's part two. There's a part two to that's the Thursday, correct? Yes. Okay, I might have to pull up on that Thursday evening. We <laughs> that. Oh shit, that might change my whole schedule around for Thursday night. All right, mm-hmm. good to know. Oh, okay. <clears throat> And, it, and at the end of the interview, it felt like they just cut it off. They didn't. It didn't feel like it really was the end of the interview anyway. So I, I kind of felt like it was going to be a part two or something down the line anyway. <clears throat> but, but um, along with that, then uh, Kanye released a video with Jay Prince uh, calling for a truce with with Drake um... to him. To help in the releasing of Larry Hoover out of prison. <clears throat> so, I there's I a couple ways I want to take that, but like I could go the route of did Jay Prince pressure this nigga? Did he did he put the did he put the Prince pressure on him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, or is Kanye just really that serious about this Hoover thing? Because I have heard heard him talk about this initiative to get Hoover uh, released and stuff. He even talked about it on his album, so. He's been saying it for a while. Like mm-hmm. um, he's really been pressed for it for a while. I think um, even uh, Kim put her her part in. Yeah. Um, try to get in about so. So. Uh, I mean, I, I ain't mad. I, I ain't gonna never be mad at peace. So respect to that. Either, either way, I think this would be a good example of. All right, I might not fuck with you like that, but there's a bigger. We can come goal. together for a bigger cause. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. and we need. We need more examples of that in the black community because we don't have examples of that in the black community. Nope. That's real. Not for real. Mm-hmm. Not for real. Hey, you know you know so you know um, from so <laughs> you know I hate I hate the transition into the fuckery with Do it, know, such a positive word, Why but not? let me transition like in with some of the fuckery parts. 
of pause of Kanye's beef that I found interesting along the way. Okay. Um, so randomly, I've been watching. I I watched um, a Rory and Maul interview with Hit Boy. They still and, around. Yeah, <laughs> they, they got okay. a whole new deal, man. They got a million dollar deal. Like I, I think it's like a ten million dollar deal with someone or whatever. They go ahead, new and they Rory do, and Maul. And they actually do. They doing a lot of interviews with like artists. Like they did a one with Alchemist. Um, this time, how are Hit the Boy. interviews? Um, well, tell I you truth, this, like, this is the first one I've seen, but was it good? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, Hit Boy, he, I mean, as far as interviews or whatever, like, um, they always been like good with interviews, even when on the Joe Button show. So, okay, yeah, so it was pretty good. So, and then with that, <clears throat> it revealed a lot to me, um, at the same time. So, you know, yay said the comment about Big Sean um, being the worst um, thing he could have done was signing him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then all of that, um, you know, Big Sean replied back with a picture of him saying, I just saw you or whatever. And then I also, you know, remember uh, when we were talking about it on the YouTube, you can watch it now. T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S on YouTube right now. You can watch our reaction to the uh, drink chance. But when I was talking um, at the reaction, I brought up Sean, um, brought out an EP with Hit Boy or whatever. And, you know, he, he kind of slightly um, addressed his issues with good music or whatever, saying that it didn't feel like a click anymore or whatever. But now after watching the, the interview with Hit Boy, it kind of brings things it kind of brings things together because Hit Boy and Kanye has a beef or whatever. And um, I know I remember. Did not know that. Hit, I remember Hit Boy. All right. Kanye made a Nas album, if y'all remember way back. Wasn't well received. It was like maybe two songs, I, maybe a few songs that I actually might have kept on my rotation for a bit or whatever then there's rumors that Nas has another album out after that or whatever and it's produced by Hit Boy and uh, the past I think it was like a couple of months ago or whatever uh, Hit Boy was like all right, see, we got Grammys we did all this acclaim or whatever and we didn't have to do all this um salacious stuff like you you know how like Kanye's just been doing crazy stuff just to promote his album and things like that whatever uh-huh. so that was like that was the first hint of there was a beef or whatever and then on the on the interview he was basically saying that Kanye was blackballing him he was like telling other people not to mess with him and stuff like that um okay yeah so gotcha. like yeah, I know I'm building up or whatever, but in the interview, he was basically saying that it, he blackballed him the whole time, and, and that's why he said the things that he was said while he was inebriated about, hey, I pushed this album, it got more acclaim than Kanye, and I didn't even have to do all these antics to boost it up. It just did it naturally or whatever. Gotcha. So, so now you got to put that into play, <clears throat> Hit Boy's making a bigger, more and more of a name for himself. He's making like a lot of classics lately. And now, after Sean drop, uh, basically uh, leaves good music and he's starting something with Hit Boy and they have this whole album. And it's like, all right, I'm starting to see where, I'll say, I'm starting to see where things might be getting a little funny between. Sean, but it is not. I'm still doing my detective work on it because I don't know, it kind of interests me because it just seems so weird that they out of the blue, uh, Sean leaves good music and then out of the blue, just Kanye says he's the worst thing I ever done was signing him or whatever. Like, it has to be something 
that happen or whatever. Like it, it just seems real weird. It but, seems yeah. like there's something definitely behind the scenes going on there. Yeah. Uh uh-huh. I just like to I I just like to see how people act behind the scenes. Cause you know, Kanye, like you said in the um reaction, he acts like he's the victim the whole time or whatever. And then at the same time, he does things, do things like this at the same time preaching again. So. Yeah, it, it's some it's some shit behind the scenes that is at the root of all of this shit that, that, that we ain't privy to just yet. Mm-hmm. But damn but, shit. Uh, he might be getting, he might feel like he got some a little bit of competition with uh because they used to work with each other. They worked with um on Watch the Throne. I think matter of fact, they did niggas in Paris together. <clears throat> Him and Kaya, whatever. And he That's even said boy? that yo, I didn't know that was a hit boy. Yeah, hit boy. Um, he was talking about it in the interview. He said, um, he even um he even said I, you know, I love bro. I he's like one of the reasons why uh Hit Boy is producing. Cause when he started producing, that's when Kanye came out, like 2003, whatever. And he wants to, you know, if 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 there was a ever a chance, he would have like a sit down with him to see where the things fuck up at pretty much. But yeah, it's it's kind of weird. All right. <clears throat> the world of yeah. Mm-hmm. Way more deep into the fuckery. Next on the list. A teacher just got fired for asking Trump to deport undocumented students. A Texas high school teacher who thought she was a pri- she was private messaging anti-immigration tweets to pre- President Donald Trump has been fired for asking the president to deport undocumented students. Um, she says, Fort Worth SD is loaded with illegal students from Mexico. Georgia Cold-blooded Clark son of a bitch. said in a series of tweets on May 17th, I really do need a contact here in uh, Fort Worth who should be actively investigating and removing illegals that are in the public school system. Clark has been a high school English teacher in the Fort Worth Independent School District since 1998. And this, and and this need to be the last year she <clears throat> she works in a, in a school system. She, yeah. People like that ain't supposed to be around kids. If you that hateful, yeah. like, God damn, it's kids. Get her ass out of there. Get her ass out of there. It's I got this from CNN and like they go deep into it. She got like, called a group of kids, uh, little what is it, little Mexico or something like that. And I was like, oh yeah, you got to get out of here. You you got to get out of here. Yeah, we need her job. Uh-huh. We got her name. Yeah, Georgia Clark. Georgia, Georgia Clark, Clark. We need your job. Uh, yeah. But what what state is this in? Texas. Can you be surprised? Oh, nothing to see. Yeah, that's tough though. Cause they <clears throat> a lot of their government and shit be be riding with weird shit. Um, like that. So I don't know. That's tough. Though. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And and more related fuckery, man. Pray for Virginia because now we're a red state again. I voted, but yeah, <clears throat> Glenn Youngkin. It's the it's the it, it, see it, that's that be the problem, yo. It be the mid year elections. It's never the uh-huh. the full four year four year ones. It's the midterms that's always messing us up. Uh-huh. And but do you know what though? It don't even matter because at the end of the day, Biden ain't really did a whole lot that he said he was gonna do. He he's pretty much done nothing for us anyway. So at this point, like, do it really matter who in all, like? Ain't, uh-huh. I'm, both both I'm, parties have failed us. So I'm, I'm I'm at the point like man, I, I'm I'm about so <laughs> over fucking politics. Yo. You know how I felt about Biden. No, you know man. how I felt before the before the election and everything. Um, but I I had been looking at some videos or whatever. I think uh, I saw a video with Charlemagne the guy. He was talking to um one of Biden's cabinet or whatever about things. I I send the video to y'all, but. I do want to bring up that topic along the line where, where, all right, are they really, are they doing anything? If they are doing anything, why are they not saying anything about it and being more vocal or whatever? But, um, yeah. But, Will, you were going to say, Faith. 
I don't even fucking remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shit. You good? Shit. I forgot you 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 were smoking stuff. So. Oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Long winded Larry threw your shit off. <laughs> My name ain't Larry. Come on, Pat up. <clears throat> Oh man. Um. Uh, well, let let me go ahead and continue the fuckery in in Virginia, uh, because this next one is some fuckery. <laughs> after I get this laugh out, because he, after he came in, it's, after you came back to his, start laughing. That shit. <laughs> it should just put, it's just funny looking at you come back. <laughs> but anyway. All right, let me get serious. <clears throat> Two hours later. <laughs> oh, man. All right, yeah, no, no, this is serious. All right. A Virginia Beach pastor is arrested in a large solicit- uh, solicitation for a prostitution ring. Stan, I can't even talk. I can't even. It was talk. girls or boys? Oh! He laying hands on them holy cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> You was wrong, man. You was wrong. <laughs> but man, this is this is like a statewide <laughs> operation. The B selection from the quiet when the collection is bands make them dance. Bands make them dance. And the choir be coming down. All right. <laughs> With that... choir robes with the back out. <laughs> oh, you thought this was a black church. <laughs> this is not a black church. This wasn't them. A... Oh, 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 oh. See that white man? Oh. <laughs> That's a pastor. So no, nah, their shit, their shit is more like uh, <laughs> their uh, collection play this. Pour some sugar on me. <laughs> oh, I oh love God. rock and roll. So put another garter in the jukebox, baby. Or whatever coin it is they put in the jukebox. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well. It started off in a jukebox in Chesterfield <laughs> County, Virginia. Why it had to be the 804? Damn. I just knew it was one. I just knew it was down there by you, Pat. No, it's, it, oh, it's it, I'm trying man. to tell you it's a statewide thing. That's why I'm trying to make awareness to it so y'all Damn can it. look out for these. Hey man, I don't live there no more. <laughs> I don't have to worry about them twerking at my church. My church is, <laughs> is a lot more settled. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody out here. Ain't, ain't nobody mud wrestling in the baptismal pool at my church. <laughs> but, but, but our Virginia listeners be what? They well. selling ass from the pool pit. Jesus. Mm-hmm. I'm dying. <laughs> so the White man looking like Opie. <laughs> Sitting there looking all in his... It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I don't know where they got those damn thongs from. That wasn't me. I watched the 700 Club every weekend. Yo, you know who I believe would do some shit like that? Y'all ever seen that dude, Kenneth Copeland? I think that's his name. It's like some Copeland. Um, and he, I, they, yeah. He was, Inside yeah. edition did some shit on here where he was looking, he was like buying a new plane or some shit. He got like an airport yeah. next to his house and all this kind yeah, of crazy shit. Yeah, he said he can't, he can't um, ride got a commercial team. planes. Yeah, because uh, it's like a tube a demons. full of demons. Yeah. <laughs> stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah that nigga. His, I could see him doing his, some shit like that. He looked he no, like he, he got looked selling like, ass. Or buying he it. One looked like, he looked like he's possessed by some demons. That's when he makes facial expressions. He looked like he looked like a spawn character. He looked ju- he looked like some perverted preacher spawn character. And we gonna rebuke you demons. 
So I, I speak out against things. the spirit of COVID-19. COVID-19. He did say that. He did say that. Boy, <laughs> have you seen the remix? When they mix oh, that shit no. up. Oh, man. That shit is a good time. Oh, God. That shit is a good time. Check it out. That dude get said, I'm going to shout COVID-19. COVID-19. Like he's going to talk to a virus. <laughs> Freaking virus. They need to get All the right, IRS right. on his ass let him talk to a tax lawyer. Something. Something. Oh, yeah. Let, all right. So, all right. 17 men who range in the age of 24 to 51 were charged with crimes related to an online chatting operation run by uh, Chesterfield Police Special Victims Detectives. So, basically, they set themselves up like they were like, like young teenagers on the chat line to set them up and they came they set up like a date one day and then that's how they got them pretty much oh damn so said 51 oh, year old john d blanchard well, was well, arrested well, and, shit. and yeah right. and and charged with felony solicitation and prostitution i already said that and use of a vehicle to promote prostitution Rock Church International is located off Kempsville Road. I was just at Kempsville Road not too long ago, too. Oh, this wow. weekend. That's, that's, Yo, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's how crazy it is. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. On their well, website, you know, Blanchard. Right. right along yeah. your path, huh, buddy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all not going to set me up. Because <laughs> I don't got nothing to do with that. Right along Whatever. Kempsville Road, huh, buddy? Do I think I'm selling that coot now? Nah, I ain't selling none of you that. You selling man. that coot now? Just saying, boy. how close to home? You selling <laughs> that coot now? Pat got poon for sale. No, I do not. That's no, what I they call him on them back none. roads of, of of Virginia. He be riding down, you know, them back roads. They call him Poon Pat. No, they got do it for that. cheap. I don't got nothing. He to do got with it for him. cheap. 17.5 ain't got shit on him. They call Jeezy the snowman, call Pat the whole man. No, no, no. Pat has oh nothing to do God. with that. No. All right. <laughs> and, and they talking about 17.5. These are different type of 17.5s, and I don't have nothing to do with that. And I deplore that, and this is <laughs> this is evil. <laughs> Fuck me. You will not have my name uh, with this. Pat the one, the whole home. man? Yeah, get it? <laughs> Had a one a hole, man. I like Christmas. Plus, I got holes, man. Y'all keep up. Like, Y'all niggas slow, man. <laughs> I don't even like holidays. I don't even know what he's talking about. Oh, I, I hate holidays, fudge but I can't stand them. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I I can't help it. It's the the comedy overrides the conscious a lot of times with me. I can't help it. It's funny to me. I gotta. <laughs> Go with it until it until it goes away. It's a, it's a thing. You know these niggas, the thing. It's like fine. Man, they busted a lot of people. One, two, three. No, nah, seriously, though. Some... No, that is some crazy shit that did. <laughs> the past Virginia out Beach. Here. Hustling Coke, Richmond. Man. Chesterfield. Richmond. Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Henrico. Kenny Thomas better go get down. He can I don't know he where can add Louisa that to his is. personal prayer package. Graysonville, uh, Maryland. Henrico, Chesterfield, Prince George, Chesterfield, Jesus, Petersburg. Still name is it. Oh, Petersburg. Petersburg, Petersburg. Richmond, Richmond. Why Westbrook. you had to say East my Ca- shit twice? Damn it! Only <laughs> I'm only saying that <clears throat> you the one just came from Kempsville. I'm I'm only saying how many times each time I said a um a city is how many times. There's how many people was on that list? Like, well, geez. um, oh. I wonder what your boy. Oh boy, that be talking like this. I wonder if he would, what he would have to say about these passes out here selling poo. Mm. Oh, oh Gino, y'all Gino. Going, <laughs> yeah, y'all know y'all going to hell out here selling that coon noon. I uh, have no idea. These 
Mexican poon, poon pack. Got it. Got them poon pack. Got them poon packs. Got I don't got no poon packs. I don't got no poon bat. All I listen to is boom bat. <laughs> My name ain't poon packs. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> <Boom packs. laughs> no oh, I'm packs. sorry. I'm done. I'm done. All right, so my last bit of fuckery for the night, man. Y'all have have y'all been keeping up on this Travis Scott Astro World concert craziness? Somewhere, somewhere. Yo, yo, that shit was a murder scene. Yeah. So many people either died or got hurt. They like basically face uh if you ain't fully filled in. He had a huge concert, was like 50,000 people, sold out crowd and shit. And mm-hmm. these motherfuckers, like Festival. he got a, yeah, they say he got a history of like raging at his festivals, which is like mosh pits and like storm mm-hmm. the barricade type mentality. So the people started off the show wrong. They stormed the entrance to get in. So bad people was just <laughs> rushing the metal detectors and shit rushing in. People was getting trampled already there. Then during the show, People were literally like mosh pitting and people were like dying on the floor and people was like taking videos. Like it's a video out. It's like a dude recording pans over like to the left or the right. And it's a person laid out dead. The, the yeah. paramedics is like doing CPI on them or whatever. But you could tell them of gone. And then you pan back and there's some girl talking about something. Woo! So like, it, it oh, looked man. it looked like some demonic <sighs> shit the way people was acting in that crowd, yo. It it was sick, yo. Like they was trampling yeah. folks, stomping on folk. They like were... people was passing out and dying just because they couldn't get out of the crowd. People was like literally like screaming, like "Let me out!" People won't move, and like it was ridiculous, yo. That shit just yeah, that. It wasn't. I was like, they were ill prepared for this. Like, like, um, like they said it was like about thirty thousand more people than it could actually have in capacity. See, that's um, the problem already. It was like you didn't um, have enough security. Said, nothing. Mm-hmm. Said eight people died, and some um, twenty five were treated at the hospitals. Um, November fifth. Um, what else? I seen videos where they try to climb the like where the cameramen were. It was like, yo, stop the show, stop the show, came out or whatever. And yeah, I was like, like they had video where it looked like Travis was looking at everything. But when I look at like how big the stadium, you're is, not like, seeing the, everything that's going on out there. No, nah, the and then like you can't view, blame him. It once just the looked shit started. like a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like I seen a lot of people out there trying to like blame him once the shit started, like he should have known mm-hmm. and did something. No, once, yeah. once you on stage, like you can't yeah, hear like nothing. like yeah. I've been on stage on on way 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 smaller crowds, and once you up there, like you can't really see like outside of the very front no row. It's not a lot you really can really focus on. All you at see one is time. bodies. You're not seeing faces. Yeah, you know especially saying? in a I can imagine, especially in a crowd that fucking that massive. big. The yeah. problem that I will blame him for though is the energies you put out are the energies you will attract. He has uh-huh. a history of at concerts telling people, let's rage, fuck the security, move past them, tear the barricade down, rush the stage, climb off of shit. Had another uh, thing where the dude was like on a balcony and the dude jumped off and is now paralyzed because he was up on the balcony and he up there looking at the dude like, I see you up there, you gonna jump? Like shit like that. So when you build that culture in your fan Uh base, they are following that energy. Like there are certain things that I don't try to perpetuate in the way I interact with people because I don't want that energy to be around me because I know where it can go. And when you're perpetuating like an anarchist type of vibe, like a yeah, let's everybody get violent and fuck shit up and tear shit up, then shit like this is going to happen because it's one thing when you're doing that in a club and it's like 200 people in that club got enough people there, security there to support that and 
you know what I mean? It might be more of a mixed crowd. So all of them ain't specifically there for you. But when you got a concert for you, that means it's 50,000 of the people that you specifically speak to. They're going to follow whatever you're like. It, it was a reason groups back in the day, like uh, Three Six Mafia or back in the day, Pastor Troy and certain shit, they couldn't come to certain places because when they came, it was a certain energy of like, we about to wild the yeah. fuck out. <clears throat> Yeah, there was a time when we when I went to the club knowing like, yeah, we probably gonna get put out this bitch because that was just the vibe of everybody at that time. Like that was the general vibe of the music, the environment. So like, what I will say is, it was less people in the club back then that was not of that ilk. So like, the music didn't make people do it, but more people that was already on that vibe gravitated toward the club back then that was already on that vibe. Like more, you saw more thugs in the club. Like now I feel like you see more ballers in the club because that's the vibe. Before that, Mm -hmm. it was more people that's kind of go to the club to dance and get their groove on because that was the vibe and party. Mm -hmm. So I feel like for like, so I feel like the vibe of his show is let's tear everything up for security. Let's push, let's move, let's mosh pit, let's rage, let's climb on shit that's not necessarily safe, but like just throw all inhibitions to the side. So when you set that as the environment, that's what you gonna I was, get. You I would say tone any, down, brother. anywhere where you're gathering thousands of people at one spot, one small area, there's a risk. Period. I don't care if they're going there for Kanye Sunday service. Anywhere. You get that. It might be less of a risk because that's a calmer vibe, that's of course. Key. That's a calmer vibe or whatever. Now, the way his whole um, his whole uh, stage setup and everything was set up, it looked pretty kind of demotic. I'll, I'll put that in there. Like, it's, it's a vibe. Kind of pretty it's demotic. a certain vibe. Now, of course, that's pretty much any vibe of any rock rock and roller as we know pretty much as that's pretty much every every, all the rock and roll we're not going to burn this motherfucker down yeah whatever face is just laughing because i said burn something down but you know what i noticed you know what the difference is though (laughs) a lot of the rock and rollers that have those type of shows do not have these type of venues or events true a lot of them are more at your smaller or your smaller venues or they're at louder outdoor places where it's more space people aren't packed as much and corralled as much it's more of like Mm. they might be on this stage but it's four other stages so people are more dispersed you know what I mean? Like the venues that are just for them, usually it's a little bit smaller, more contained, more control. Also, last two points I'll say is there's an issue there. I, I saw Abba and Preach where they were saying Live Nation has like a history of having these type of um, incidents at their events. So there's something that needs to be looked into with them as an event company, maybe it's the vendors they're using to set up the stages and the whatever, maybe it's the security companies they're using, maybe it's the... Maybe they're a little too maybe cheap it, around the edges. Yeah, maybe maybe it's some corners or something being cut that could you could put some more money into it and, and maybe fix this, but it's definitely something there. But I will say to the young brother Travis, you need to tone your rhetoric down as far as how you're presenting at your concerts. Like the music can be about whatever, but it's people out there that have some raging, some raging type music, that heavy metal type music, that music that make people get fired up, but they're not having these incidents happen. So it's a certain vibe. It's a difference between me saying rage have a mosh pit than me saying all you all y'all security don't do shit. Fuck that. Everybody rush them now. Five foot like. Me giving you, th- that's the same thing as like me, like I'm giving you a directive to do some dangerous shit. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, as opposed to my music, just hyping you up to the point where you might be, then it becomes like more just individuals. But when you're giving directives, now you're like 
speaking to the mass to like everybody do this weird shit that only three people might have been doing. So that's like where it gets dangerous. So I think he needs to tone it down, but I will salute him for saying he's gonna pay for the funeral expenses and you know what I'm saying? Oh, and he reimbursed everybody's um right. tickets too. Right. I, I definitely respect that. At least he's taking accountability for it. I, I think that's big because a lot of young people in his generation be reckless at the have, mouth. Or they may have doubled down on what happened, <clears throat> like fuck that. That's just what it is. So I, I respect that he does take accountability for his part in it. But yeah, it, it, it was just a tragedy, man. Rest in peace to those people who lost their life. Uh, prayers and, and and get well soon to those people who are hurt and who may have lifetime injuries from that. And just, yeah, man, we got to be a little more, like, fun can't override intellect, man. Like, it can't be where you lose all mm-hmm. inhibitions. And, <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, and don't bring 10 year olds to a, a freaking festival. Hold on, what? What's wrong with y'all? It was yeah, a 10 year old like, man? There was kids. Yeah. They, they brought kids to festivals oh and stuff like that, man. Don't be doing that, that that's man. Just, that's stupid. That's just, that's just, that is not the environment for a child. No. I, 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 I'm oh. not even going to hate on like a 16, 17 year old. They're a little older, they're a little more mature. They, <clears> they, they might have their wits about them, depending on their maturity level. I can see that. But like a child, you talking about anything younger than me than 16. If you can't drive a car by yourself mm-hmm. legally yet, I, I, I can't trust you in something that crazy of an environment. And and the other reason why they shouldn't have them because mm-hmm. they said there was somebody walk um walking around injecting people with drugs. Jeez. Like injecting them with sedatives, like stab like they said um a security guard was passed out and they looked at his neck and it and it was like um somebody michael morbius his neck with a needle or something and then they found sedative in it what man the hell? Just, why is that fun people why, what, party people why is that fun for how is that fun mm. i don't want to go like i'm down I, with burning mm. man type <clears throat> shit and all that where it'd be more like rages free love and, and, peace. and stuff like but like and, i've know, even been to rage but ra- a lot of rage chose are drug safer intake, but- a lot of raids, they take that shit so seriously because it is about the experience that they like have like stations set up to make sure you hydrated. They have like people making sure that like if somebody's not doing well, they can get them help. Like I've mm-hmm. I've seen I, I've been to raids where it's like you can feel it's kind of safe getting your jam on, like because there it's more it's not so much about the violence mm-hmm. of it; it's more about the experience of the music and everybody being on that one accord. And vibing, you know what I mean? But this shit shit. is like, I'm telling you to wild out, be violent, rage, go against the security, rush the stage all at once. Like, I'm telling you to do that type of environment, just gotta chill. Like, that's just, yeah. And don't bring no kids to no adult shit. Like, that's just stupid. I don't mean to call nobody stupid, but that action is very stupid. Very stupid. Very, very, very. Oh, um, yeah. But uh, but to end out the Shit. fuckery, um, I did want to loop back around to a story yeah. from earlier this week when we was talking about Will and Jada. Um, and Pat was very okay. concerned um, this past week on episode 50. Leave Will Smith alone out on all podcast platforms that you probably listen to right now or it's on YouTube. Um, but you can you can breathe easy, young Padawan. Mm-hmm. Your boy Will Smith is about to get his retribution in the public eye. He is, he said he was on a Oprah show and he was doing an interview with her and he was talking about a new book that he's going to be releasing that he's going to be talking about all of his infidelities and, um, and all of his, uh, entanglements. So, um, it, it won't necessarily be leaving Will alone, but Will will get his, his day in the sun to have his red table talk out there for publication. So uh, it's coming soon, Pat. We got you. We got you. We ain't gonna let your boy Will Smith go down like that. Oh, man. Yo, you know what? It's too late. It's gone. I was about to say, man, y'all both, Will, Jada, y'all both need to just shut the fuck up. Nope. Just, nope. This, shut the fuck I'm up. I'm telling you, that's how they, they like this, Pat. This is not a, a big thing. They up. like it. <clears throat> This nigga was on oh, talking about, oh, this is the lie of the century right here, yo. Fellas, 
I don't know how you gonna work this out with your black queen, because I can't see this ever being some shit that I can say to my woman without her either socking the shit out of me or immediately packing up all of her shit and leave. <laughs> um, but uh, this fool said they are a hundred percent together and a hundred percent free. That's the line of the century. Y'all use that out there, see how that works for y'all, man. I ain't never heard of So if polygamist and, and people that's trying to convince your woman to do some wild shit or have an open relationship, that you throw that out there with the great Will Smith, the great genie, <laughs> and said it. So, but that was the line of the yeah. interview to me. But you check that out. It's on like... uh, I can't remember the exact name of the uh platform, but it's on uh interviews. Uh let me let me tell y'all how y'all can find this shit, isn't it? Just hold on, I, 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 I'm gonna I'm 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 hold y'all down, Paw Squad. I'm gonna make sure y'all y'all can get this too, because it was funny to me. Uh, it was Will on Jada, Oprah's. Two freaks. Uh, got emotional one time. <clears throat> it was on Will's talk with Oprah. What is the name of the Oprah interview? I can't well, just look up Oprah interview with Will Smith. It pops right up. But uh, yeah, he good. talked about a lot of shit on there. But the Will and Jada shit just I was like, oh, hot. How did you do this to me, podcast God? You you brought this right back around, full circle. Padawan was very concerned about Will, and look at Will. He right there. To, he going to get his jabs back, so I ain't even he will not no be more. out here. pull out a whole book. Shut the fuck up, Will. Shut the fuck up, Jada. <laughs> all right? Y'all both nasty. Y'all nasty as hell. Y'all just nasty, all right? We get it. I ain't nasty. We get it. We get it. You nasty. And, and, nasty. and Jada picked Jada's hoes was one of them talkative hoes, and he started making a whole s- album about it, and you got caught or whatever. I understand. All right, y'all both nasty. Okay, that's cool. All right, and y'all so nasty that you that your son that your son Jada wanted to got dang emancipate himself from the family, and and Willow was walking walking around thinking, you know, this is normal. This is okay. I can understand why you wanted. Dick to the side, mom. I understand that. That's basically what she said. I understand it. You know, uh, she didn't say gotta that. Understand. <laughs> we can understand why that, you know, Tell your mama, I can understand how you wanted dick to the side, yeah. mama. <laughs> That's basically what she said. And you ain't say that, Willow. You didn't say she, you era, didn't tell your mama that August you know, was a, mono- a monogamous he that relationship <laughs> might be <laughs> a monogamous relationship might just be, you know, primitive and it might not work with this day and time the way the economy is and everything. No. But so I understand, man, you know, you, you know, dad's a busy oh guy he out here making movies, being the Gemini man, you know, being Hancock too and all this oh. other stuff, being, <laughs> being Serena Williams and 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 Venus Williams dad and stuff. You might just want you might just want a crazy young um, hey, you kids. didn't have to make it your I know it ain't no kids might. to watch the show, but uh if you happen to be Thank listening God. to this podcast and you riding when you got your kids in the car on the way to work or something happen, and they happen to hear this portion. Jesus. Kids, don't ever tell your mama. <laughs> I don't care how old you get. <laughs> Oh, good, mama. I understand. I, I understand why you was why you wanted some dick to the side. <laughs> you can't say. Jesus, this is a ah! different way we live. They be saying all that stuff, all that, all that stuff in that high, high <laughs> elevated, and I'm I'm in a different mind, and this, this is a new age way of thinking, talk, and stuff like that. I. Right. I, I'm through. Yeah. I'm I'm done. I'm over it. Okay, you over oh, Willie D. Yeah. Faces over Joe Button. I'm over <laughs> people. <laughs> I'm I'm That's over funny. Willie Jada. I am done. I I am done. Look, y'all both freaks. Oh, y'all like yes, fucking. Yeah. Look, y'all you both attract black people, and the, and the world know it. And you have y'all prospects. Y'all want to go and bang out. I understand that. I'm telling okay. y'all, man, something tells me this is gearing up for something like it's going to be a Will and Jada collaborative movie or something. Because she need to do something because she ain't came out with a movie in a long time. She's just not an actress no they more. She's just retired from that forever. 
something like, like but it's it's, it's, it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be something coming from this that's gonna that they promote like you don't do all this much talk like and i know he got the book but it's something else coming or maybe the book is maybe some of these talks is like her way of like getting out in front of some of the shit that he about to say in the book but it's something it's something it's something there they they promote they about to promote something Stay I know what they're promoting. They, they're promoting polygamy and, and being a, a rich black couple that get to bang everything they want to bang and stuff. I understand, mama. You just need some dick to the she side. Bangs, she bangs. It's okay, mama. You, you didn't, just getting some dick to the side. You, you didn't have to bang my brother's best friend, though. That's one thing. You know, you know, you know he had mental problems. You ain't hey, really man. had to say that, but I... It's all right. Hey man, it's Jada okay. said if he old enough to cross the street, he old enough to get hit. <laughs> y'all related together because y'all music stars oh, and stuff like Jada that. Says she she a summer a baby. Jada says she a summer baby. Her favorite month is August, nigga. Jada don't give a fuck. She out here doing her. It was thugging. June, July. Yeah. Jada, Jada was giving Gina. August that Jason's lyric on the cash register love. She she getting her skido. That I I still I still said she was fucking for real in that movie, but uh, <laughs> know, nobody said she that. she was in, pulling in that movies. she was pulling that Halle Berry before. <laughs> he would tell me that her. It's <laughs> called method acting. Oh, there was method. There was there was method. No, there was a method, all right. Was some was method in yeah. methods. Some methods it from the comic. Some method. It was some method. Methods and moves. Methods and moves. Some fuckery mm-hmm. too. <laughs>